March 2015. NASA's Dawn spacecraft reaches the end of a seven and a half year journey to the asteroid belt, the rocky wasteland between Mars and Jupiter. NASA is not looking for life. Its scientists are not expecting to find alien creatures. Not until the Dawn probe reaches a cryovolcano on the supposedly dead dwarf planet called Ceres. Ceres is about a third of the entire mass of the asteroid belt. That's about the size of Texas. Here we have this mini planet that's just beyond Mars that we know nothing about. Who knows what kind of secrets the place holds? Ceres is more than twice as far from the warmth of the sun as we are on Earth. Temperatures regularly drop below minus 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Conditions that would freeze all the water in our blood and basically make us explode from the inside out. Temperatures this cold should mean that Ceres is a dead world. But when dawn enters orbit, the images it sends back to Earth stun mission scientists. We see that most of the landscape is, well, kind of flat, and then all of a sudden, bang, there's this mountain there. Where did it come from? Just out of nowhere. This solitary peak is the only mountainous structure found anywhere on Ceres. We've given it the name Ahuna Mons, and it's the loneliest mountain in the solar system. Ceres is supposed to be geologically inactive, so it makes you wonder, is this a natural feature or something else entirely? Scientists compare the shape of Ahuna Mons to mountains on Earth and come up with a shocking theory. This feature on Ceres reminds us of what we call stratovolcanoes on the Earth, very steep sided cones, just like Mount Rainier in Washington. Volcanoes on Earth here spew liquid magma. It's thousands of degrees. We see mountain tops exploding, huge gas plumes in the atmosphere. Ceres is a very cold place. Volcanoes, on the other hand, are hot. So what's going on here? Dawn's high resolution camera photographs Ahuna Mons in greater detail. The images support the strange idea that the lonely mountain is behaving like a volcano. Don spotted these bright streaks coming out of the earth and, and kind of rolling down its sides. The bright streaks that we see on the mountain are made of a type of salt. The salt allows the melting of, of material to happen at different temperatures, and it, it's telling us that ice is, is probably involved. Incredibly, high concentrations of salt inside Ceres are melting the ice creating a slushy brine that cascades out of Ahuna Mons. Both water and salt are erupted out of Ahuna Mons as part of the volcano. So the lava itself is actually salty water. Instead of a hot volcano, it's a cold volcano, a cryo-volcano. Ceres is meant to be dead, but the discovery of this cryo-volcano changes everything. There have to be liquid water reservoirs down there inside Ceres, maybe even a global ocean. What we have here on Ceres is slushy water mixed with ice, salts, and organic compounds. And this is what we think are the building blocks for creating life. This environment, so salty, so cold, could it possibly harbor life? Well, guess what? It just might. If we're looking for ET, perhaps Ceres is a good place to start. But what might that life look like? We've learned from our own oceans that life can take on any crazy looking alien form. In the remote depths of Earth's oceans are conditions not dissimilar in many ways to those on Ceres. A place utterly hostile to humans, cold, dark, and home to the strangest creatures on Earth, many still unknown to science. It is a bizarre, fascinating world of creatures in the deep, dark ocean. Organisms that inhabit this underwater realm can grow to immense sizes. They grow almost indefinitely and keep getting bigger. And in that deep, cold environment, there's really no limits on the size of some of these creatures. We have giant crabs that normally are small, but they can get huge. I can't reach out wide enough to show you how big these crabs can get, about 12 feet across. The deep cold slows metabolisms, which allows incredible lifespans. Some of these animals have 250 to say as much as 500 years old. That is fascinating. Many creatures in this world of total darkness are translucent and glowing, 
having evolved to generate their own light. Organisms have started producing their own light through bioluminescence. We have some creatures and their bodies are gelatinous, where you can see right through the tissues to their brain and their eyes. Terrifying alien life forms, glowing, translucent, and huge. Just one of these creatures is enough to have nightmares about. Some scientists investigating the dwarf planet Ceres believe that its frozen oceans could support life similar to that found in our deep seas. Monstrous organisms, vast and hungry. Such a creature has already been imagined by science fiction writers. H.P. Lovecraft described a world-destroying monster, which he called Cthulhu. The Cthulhu, this god of a creature, that bizarre animal with the arms of a giant squid. Nor is it beyond the realm of possibility that a creature from Ceres could make it to Earth. In fact, Scientists have already observed some telltale signs. The surface of Ceres is heavily pockmarked with craters. It's entirely possible that at some point in the past, impacts kicked out material from Ceres and that material may have traveled to Earth. You need to figure out, could the life have survived the impact that ejected it in the first place? And could life survive the long trip through cold, deep space? The ideal state of transferring life across space is in its most robust form, and that might be a seed or a fertilized egg. The very beginnings of life, ready to travel. What if material came from Ceres to Earth? And what if it had some life? There is one part of Earth that would seem like home to a creature from Ceres, Antarctica, and in particular, subterranean polar lakes like Lake Vida. This mysterious lake sits 65 feet beneath the ice. Saltier than seawater, it's still liquid at minus eight degrees Fahrenheit. There's even life in these waters. The life that might be growing at Ceres should be able to thrive in Antarctica because the conditions are so similar. It is surely just a coincidence that there have recently been reports of unexplained events at McMurdo Station. There are all sorts of rumors about things going on at McMurdo where people want to leave and they won't talk about 